Hi and welcome to uh, the video all about the second topic uh, within C1, so within year kind of year 9 and year 10 chemistry. So this is uh, C12 limestone and building materials and it focuses mainly upon limestone and the uses of limestone and a bit of the chemistry surrounding it. Okay. We need to think about an overview of the topic first of all. Now the overview of the topic can be found in any specification, okay? And the specifications can be taken straight off of the AQA website, that's the course that we do, so straight off the AQA website. And there's a link on uh, the blog, so the Kyneton Science Department blog, uh, straight onto that AQA website, just give it a click and have a look and a whole new specifications there. And it gives you a, a list of all the subject content you need and some kind of additional materials uh, as well. Okay, now for the limestone topic, you need to be able to consider and evaluate the environmental, social and economic uh, effects of exploiting limestone and producing building materials from it. Okay, that is thinking about um, the effects of quarrying, it's thinking about the effects of kind of like lorries going in and out of these villages where they're like near a quarry. It's also um, about uh, limestone and what we use it for and how we use it. It's just it's the bigger picture around limestone. And you need to be able to evaluate the developments um, in using limestone, cement and concrete as well. Okay, and again, all of this is going to tie in with us, uh, some of the experiments we've done in the past, uh, some examples, some photos I'm going to show you. I'm going to link all of this in um, to a recent trip that I took up to the Peak District and show you some photos of what's happened to quarries now, what there's you kind of see a, a working quarry, and then you're going to see some of the, the stuff that they've done uh, to turn a quarry back into a good use as well. Okay, so limestone. So we know limestone as calcium carbonate. Okay, calcium carbonate is the it's kind of the science name uh, for limestone, and its chemical symbol is CaCO3. Okay, Ca. That's your calcium, that's straight off the periodic table. C, that's carbon, straight from the periodic table. And O, that's oxygen. So there's three oxygens for every carbon and the calcium. Okay. That is a compound. So we know a compound is two or more elements chemically joined together. Okay. It's not a mixture, it's a compound. And we know that uh, we need to think about limestone being quarried from the ground. And we also need to think about the uses um, of limestone and we know that it's used as a building material and we're going to talk later about how it's then limestone can be heated with clay and can be turned into cement how we can then mix it with sand to turn it into mortar and then we can mix that with sand and aggregates and we can turn that into um, yeah into concrete <clears throat> okay so the first uh, reaction really that we need to concentrate on is this thing called thermal decomposition now thermal comes from heat and decomposition means the breaking down of something. So heating calcium carbonate gives us calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This is this uh, equation at the top here, so this is a symbol equation. Remember that we have word equations, so like this is a word equation, and then kind of a level up from that would be symbol equations. So we take a symbol straight from the periodic table and we put them into an equation like this. So we've got our calcium carbonate here, our CaCO3, and we've got calcium oxide and carbon dioxide being formed. So it's a decomposition because it's the breaking down of calcium carbonate using heat, thermal decomposition. And we get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Notice that you've got one calcium and one calcium there. So one calcium in the reactants, one calcium in the products, and then we've got one carbon, one carbon, and three oxygens. There's two there, and then in the product, we've got one and two there, makes three. So this is a balanced symbol equation. Okay, other carbonates, such as magnesium carbonate and sodium carbonate, they decompose in the same way with a metal oxide and carbon dioxide being given off. Okay, the general formula for this in a word equation down the bottom is a metal carbonate, when you heat it up, you get a metal oxide and carbon dioxide being given off. Okay, so it could be magnesium carbonate goes to magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Okay, a sodium carbonate would make sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, the limestone cycle. 
We start with our limestone, just like this. You can quarry it straight out of the ground. This is a piece of limestone that I picked up in the Peak District um, over Christmas, and it's just straight from a quarry, and it's just, yeah, a hunky chunk of limestone. So we can take this limestone, we can heat it up, and then we can see what happens, okay? So we get that calcium oxide, what happens when we react that further, what, and then what to do with that product and that product and so on. And then we can get back to limestone again. So any cycle, limestone cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, you have that product uh, to start off with, that reactant to start off with, you do a, a number of reactions and eventually a reaction reproduces what you had at the start. So here we have limestone at the start and we're going to get back round to having limestone again. Okay, calcium carbonate, limestone, CaCO3. We can heat that, we've talked about this process, thermal decomposition already, we heat that up and what do we get? Well we know we get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is a gas that's going to disappear off into the atmosphere. The carbon um, dioxide goes off, it's a greenhouse gas, uh, it can cause global warming. Okay, So there, well, that's one of the, the waste products. Now this, calcium oxide, this is a solid, Okay, so it's something that we can physically hold in our hands. So the calcium oxide, CaO, we can add water to that calcium oxide. On adding water, you get this chemical over here called calcium hydroxide, Ca, and then in brackets, OH, and then outside the brackets, two. So there's two OHs, two OHs around a Ca in the middle. <clears throat> now, calcium hydroxide has another name. It's a, it's a liquid, and we call it something. Can anyone have a think, maybe uh, decide what calcium hydroxide is? It's lime water, okay? Lime water. So the, the thing that we use to detect whether or not something has carbon dioxide present. So we add carbon dioxide to this and it creates calcium carbonate again. So we see now this cycle. We've taken limestone, we've heated it up, we've made calcium oxide, uh, we've added water, it makes calcium hydroxide, we add carbon dioxide and we make limestone again. We make calcium carbonate again in this process. So it's gone from the start and we've got back there again, okay? Now our observations along the way are this. When we go from calcium carbonate to calcium oxide, it turns ever so slightly yellow, okay? We add our water, you can hear it kind of sizzling, as a sizzling noise because it gets really, really hot and the rock itself breaks down into small pieces, okay? And the process whereby we take lime water, we add carbon dioxide, well, we know already that turns cloudy. Okay, the reason it turns cloudy is there's small particles of calcium carbonate, limestone, being formed. Those small white particles within uh, the water, as they get made, they get more and more of them, and they're, they're white. So obviously it turns the water cloudy. Okay. We need to be thinking about other metal carbonates other than our calcium carbonate. Okay? And we need to think about other reactions. Okay? So other than the reaction that takes place, when you heat a metal carbonate, um, like we saw earlier, we also need to know what happens when these metal carbonates react with an acid. Okay, this is the same process that takes place when limestone is subjected to acid rain. Okay, hence the little rain dude on the right here. Okay, so we have a metal carbonate, we add our acid, and we get salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Okay, water and carbon dioxide are really common products in lots of chemical processes as is salt. Now this is not necessarily the table salt that you put on your chips. Okay, it can, a salt is a metal and a non-metal reacted together. So in this situation, we've got a metal carbonate, we add an acid, we get salt, water and carbon dioxide. So we could take calcium carbonate, we could add an acid such as hydrochloric acid, the HCl. Okay, we get a salt, so a metal and a non-metal. The metal here is calcium, the non-metal is chlorine, CaCl2. And you then also get water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, this is a balanced, simple equation. Have a look at it, investigate it. Why is it balanced? Why have I had to put a two in front of the HCl? Okay, it could be, could be a question on the exam, on a higher tier exam, to balance that equation, maybe they might not put the two in there to start off with. There might be a line underneath and say, right, how many of these HCLs do you need in order for it to be balanced? Okay, quite a common question. <clears throat> okay, 
So the uses of our limestone, what can we do with it? Linking into building materials. So we've got this, we've got cement, mortar and concrete. So cement is simply limestone heated with clay. Easy as that. Okay, mortar, so mortar is like the stuff in between bricks. Okay, if the paint wasn't on here, you'd be able to see on the wall behind, you'd be able to see the mortar in between bricks. So it's cement mixed with sand. It makes like glue for rocks. It holds them together. And concrete, so that's just cement mixed with sand and aggregate. If you don't know what aggregate is, have a look. Okay, search that word on the internet, aggregate, uh, lots of G's in that word. Find out what aggregate is, okay? Try and uh, get yourself used to finding these things out for yourselves. Okay, and like, like I said, finding things out for yourselves, I want you to try and work out what the uses are for these things as well. What do we use cement for? What do we use mortar for? What do we use concrete for? Okay, maybe compare them with each other as well, which is the strongest, which is the weakest. Uh, why do we use this rather than this? Okay, and in terms of our building materials, you might get given an exam something like, uh, how does concrete compare to this? And it might be steel or wood or something. But it will give you some data about each and ask you to interpret that data. So you're not going to be expected to remember lots of things about different materials. Okay, so linking into exam questions then. This is the final slide up here. Okay, so things you might get asked. First of all, straight facts. You might get asked, what is the chemical name for limestone? What is the chemical symbols uh, that make up calcium carbonate? Okay. Uh, you might get asked things about observations, so you're thinking like about the limestone cycle. You might get asked, um, what do you observe when you add carbon dioxide to lime water? What do you observe when this is heated? What do you observe when this happens, when that happens? Um, you might get asked about comparing building materials, like I've said. So you might get given some data and asked to compare them with each other, or given a graph and comparing strengths of things, something like that. These are all things that we're going to work on between now and the exam. Okay? Advantages and disadvantages of using limestone. Why do we use limestone? Okay, and the advantages, disadvantages of that. Okay, so we use limestone. So what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? You've got to think about quarrying. You've got to think about the processing. You've got to think about the amount of energy that goes in. Okay, you've got to think about the good uses, but the negative sides of it. Okay, and the advantages and disadvantages of mining or of quarrying. All these things. And you need to be specific in your answers. It's not good enough just to say, causes pollution. Okay, you've got to say um, something like, uh, the lorries that carry the limestone produce carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which contributes to global warming. Or um, the factories that process the limestone give off sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide causes acid rain. You have to be very specific. Okay, that's the end of my slides. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show some photos. So it's going to be some overlaid photos. You're going to, I'm going to talk you through some of the good things that have come out of quarrying limestone. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the negative aspects of it. I'm going to show you some Google, um, Google map images looking down at a, at a village in the Peak District that I visited recently. And you can see there the effect of quarrying on that area. I'm going to show you some, uh, some photos of my recent trip. And, and we'd be able to basically get some ideas about these advantages and disadvantages of quarrying and using limestone through that. Okay, so yeah, so I'll pass you on to those photos now. Okay, here you see a Google Maps image uh, looking down on the village of Bradwell and you can see uh, the limestone quarry that's next to it and how big it is and how much of a scar it is on the landscape. Now, in order to get the limestone from the ground, they drill holes in the rock face, uh, they put down a charge and they blow out enormous chunks of limestone. They get taken away by uh, a big, big conveyor belt and taken up to the factory. Now, obviously, uh, this process needs lots of lorries in order to transport the stuff around. Like, like I said, you can see just the big scar on the landscape that these things cause. Uh, just massive chunks of ground, massive chunks of earth taken away. But the good thing is, these can be reclaimed. They can be filled up with water to make fishing lakes uh, or boating lakes, but there's really bad currents, so there's no swimming in those. And they can also be filled in, uh, like this one here in Bradwell, and turned into a golf course, for example. Okay, so all you need to do now is just check out the blog regularly for new videos and updates. Okay, I'll see you soon.